timer just went ding and we're going to go check our rolls that were in the oven. Ah, and they look perfect. See, they really doubled in volume. You see? Yep. And during the break, we had two more helpers wake up, so we have lots of help. Yep. We're going to take off the saran wrap and we're going to just punch it down a little bit, literally punch it down. Can I help? Yep, you can give it a punch. Okay. Um, and we're going to show you a few different ways you can shape the rolls now. The easiest way to shape rolls, first when you're making rolls, you're always going to want to spray, whether you're using a, a sheet or muffin tins, you're going to want to spray down your surface that you're using. And the easiest way to shape rolls is to just get a little bit of flour in your hands. I got some. You have some already? Here's a little more. Just get a little flour in your hands, rub them together. And then grab a ball of dough, like so. So it's about like that in your hand. And then just roll it. Okay, I need a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. And then plop it down on the sheet. Just enough to kind of get in the palm of your hands. And roll it till you can feel like it's getting into a little bit of a tight ball. And you're going to put them about so far apart on the cookie sheet. And when they rise, they'll actually rise together. And then when you cook them, you'll, you can piece them apart and they look really nice. Another way that you can make rolls, shape your rolls, is take them and flour a surface like so, and I spread that around, and get a good chunk, like so, and then, see how organized I am in the kitchen? More flour on top, and then actually roll them out. Roll it out in a circle, and this is how you'd make crescent shape rolls. So you roll them out till about, it's about as thick as say a pizza crust would be thick, maybe a thin pizza crust, and then you just take a pizza cutter and roll away, and I think I'm going to cut it into three, I think I'm going to cut it into twelfths. Like so. And you could have brushed the middle with melted butter. I'm going to just skip that today. And then you roll it up and you have a croissant, croissant shape that you can put on your hey. sheet like that. You could also take a cookie cutter, a circle cutter, and actually cut out circle out of your dough rather than that and then just like fold it over. That's how my mom always did them. But then you kind of have wasted dough and you have to like mush it together and re-roll and I'm really too lazy to do that. <laughs> Mom, I want to make a double one. You want to make a double one? Okay, you can make a double one. That's fine. Uh, another way you could do it is if you wanted to cook them in the muffin tin. Uh, yeah. You can make three smaller balls. Remember we made the one Mama, big ball before? But you could also make Mommy. three small balls, Mommy. like so. Well, look what I made. What did you make? The tiniest one. A tiny roll. You could also make tiny rolls. So see, I've got three balls just like that and then pop them together in one muffin tin. That's a really nice looking roll too. If you know what lion house rolls are, I think how the lion house roll does their rolls is they roll out like a big, only instead of doing a circle like this, a big glob like I did last time, they'd roll it out in a, in a square. 
And then they cut pieces that are like two inches by one inch or two inches by, yeah, about two inches by one inch, I wanna say. Okay, so I'm not measuring well. But like a rectangular shape like this. And instead of doing the balls face closely together like this, they'll just do a rectangular roll and then put them close together like, like that. So you have balls and crescents and floppy toppies and You can shape them however you want. You can cut them out like airplanes. It really doesn't matter. I just like to do what's quick and the balls are the quickest and the crescents are also quick because you get a bunch of them all at once and happy rolling. Oh, and after you do, you get a sheet set out like this, you're going to have to let it rise again. So once I get this whole sheet set out, I'll, I'll spray the top of it with some nonstick and then cover it again with either a wet towel or saran wrap and then set it um, on the sideboard to rise until they get nice and fluffy, probably about another one hour. And at that point, they'll be ready to bake.